Hi, welcome back to another episode of the Keto Naturopath. Uh, today I'd like to be rather casual about just going over some information so that you do take action on this one thing. Um, I'll try not to be too strident and I'll try to uh, work with you on this in terms of presenting this information. I, my goal here is to have you understand having a high omega-6, low omega-3 ratio is a problem for you. It has been a problem for most people for the last 30 to 50 years since World War II. And I want you to show you what conditions it's associated with and how easy it is to take care of this, how to know about it, how to measure it, how to take care of it, how to monitor yourself so you always know. If you do this one thing, your whole life won't change, but it is a big variable and you don't get clean little pieces like this that you can change in your life that much. So actually, I'm going to start you with the most complicated part. Let's look at labs. These are part of a very big lab panel. I blind you with all those numbers. These are labs that we do on a lot of different people. So this is just the last 10 people. What I did was, is that I arranged these. This stands for most common out of range labs that we have. And I put them in a special little box of all the other ones. And so we have the omega-6-3 ratio. So this is from the highest omega-6 to the lowest omega-6. So the worst ratio to the better ratios. Down here you can see people still have problems, but they've started taking their uh, fish oil, but haven't been doing anything else relative to their diet. So it's a partial reprieve, we'll call it. Uh, they could put more effort into improving their health, but it's their body, their life. They can do what they will. So over here we have pretty much an 18 to 1, 18 times more omega-6 linoleic acid versus omega-3. Okay. So what's the difference? What does it correlate with? Why would you care? Well, let's just zip down and all the red ones are all the labs that are out of range. We're not going to go through all those, but I'll go through the obvious ones. Let's look at high omega-6 versus uh, cholesterol. That's always one. Boy, they have great cholesterol. Well, cholesterol means nothing. Absolutely means nothing. And in fact, that's what the whole studies were back in the 70s. You drop your cholesterol and you increase your rates of all cause death, specifically from heart disease more predominantly from heart disease, I should say. What else do we have? We have your inflammation, higher inflammation, inflammation is associated with higher omega-6 uh, ratios, as you'll find out more about, and go on and on. So these are, it's, it's fun for me to talk about labs. I'm, I'm data-driven and I hope that that wears off on you and that you become data-driven. Be a little bit, start with small pieces like what we're talking about today, just this Omega-6 panel. That's all I'm asking. This is the panel. Part of the panel actually is up there. Okay, done with that. These are the reasons that, these are the situations that are associated with elevated omega-6 to 3. Heart attack, stroke, cancer, obesity, insulin resistance, diabetes, asthma, etc. Depression, schizophrenia, lupus, postpartum depression, Alzheimer's, dementia in general, ADHD. Well-documented that's why you should consider doing this. Okay, so now I want to go down to, this is well documented also, soybean oil has just gone nuts since the mid 60s. Second to that was canola oil that started in the late 80s and it's even higher from what I understand. That's Canadian, obviously. Um, here's back to just a small little one box of only the Omega 63 panel. And the same thing, what it's associated with. And we have a, a, another fat, fatty acid deficiency is called oleic acid deficiency. Oleic acid is what you get from olive oil, what you get from avocado oil. It's um, monosaturated, but when you're so high in linoleic acid, your omega-6, it pushes out a lot of other fats. It's just looking at fats in general. So what I just said was olive oil was high in oleic acid, that's the green bar. So is avocado, oleic acid, it's high in the green bar. These are not seed oils, these two that I just named, avocado and olive. They are fruit oils, but they're common oils, and that's why they're on this list. This is common oils, common fats that people have access to. And so what we're, what we're most concerned with are the oils that people use that are highest in this beige one on this particular one. So this is safflower oil, 78% omega-6, that's high. Um, here we have, let's go. We're looking at the blue bars. So the blue bars is linoleic acid. So we have high for 
sunflower oil. We have high for corn oil. We have high for soybean oil. We have high for cottonseed oil. Those are the most egregious, obviously, and there's peanut oil. And But why not? Canola oil. People go, well, canola oil, it's the poor man's olive oil. Well, it's the way it's processed for one. Uh, it doesn't do well at high temperatures and it throws off a lot of oxidative products, which are a problem, in addition to the fact that it does have a significant amount of linoleic acid. Down here, these are high in saturated fats, great cooking oil, uh, coconut oil, cooking that, butter fat, palm oil, if you have access to that. Um, what we recommend generally to get to the punchline before the end is when you go on a protein sparing modified fast, you tend to burn off your excess omega-6 fats, believe it or not. That's why we consider this kind of a, a general detox. Now I want to go back to something a little more raw, a little more perhaps in your face. Just going to go saying there's plenty of research out here. I'm just going to read the titles. Omega-3 fatty acid and metabolic syndrome effects and emerging mechanisms of action, actions. And that's back in 2011. Okay, there's a search and you can put that in there. Omega-6 and obesity, do that search and see what comes up. Omega-6, omega-3 fatty acids in the genetics of obesity. Importance uh, balance of omega-6, omega-3 in the prevention of obesity. Omega-6 fatty acids for the primary prevention of cardiovascular disease. Omega-6 polyunsaturated fatty acids and the early origins of obesity. Incidence of cancer in men on a diet high in polyunsaturated fats. So when we say polyunsaturated fats, we're talking about corn oil, soy oil, canola oil, things that are, that are uh, these cooking oils, what they call vegetable oils, even cottonseed oils there, and you got the picture. This is going back saying omega-3 fatty acids, it's important to us, it's how we evolved. Very important to us. We basically grew, you know, want to read this, it says how fish made us humans. It talks about essential fatty acids, EP fish oils. This is role of DHA, the marine food web, is a term of evolution of our brain. This was really interesting. This is from Clinical Nutrition and it came out of 2011. Let me just read you the first, the first sentence here. The most striking modification of the U.S. food supply during the 20th century was a thousand-fold increase in the estimated per capita consumption of soybean oil from infinitesimally small to 7% and then kept on increasing. The increased soybean oil availability produced increases in linoleic acid that exceeded changes in all other essential fatty acids. This finding was confirmed and it's went as high as, oh, it's confirmed through mature breast uh, breast milk from American women increased from 6% to over 16%, and on and on it goes. Um, it's a big deal. It really has happened, and maybe you're only 20 or 25, and you don't have this awareness. You can do something about it. Don't say, this is your normal life. Do something about it. Pull it back. Don't be a high omega-6 three person because it's going to affect you for the rest of your life. This is just a good article to goes down all the different changes and increases uh, over the years, over the last 150 years. Healthy intakes of omega-3-6 estimation, estimations considering worldwide diversity. Can linoleic acid contribute to coronary artery disease? And that was 1993. And the answer to that is yes. What happened to do no harm? The issue of dietary omega-6 fatty acids. Omega-3 fatty acids effective, effectively prevent coronary heart disease. The omega-3, right? Omega-3 prevents the heart disease. Diet and disease, the Israeli paradox. This is half funny in the sense of the Israelis were so loyal to the United States um, nutritional standards that were based on those two studies in the 70s, that they followed them and they weren't getting the right results. They were having higher all-cause death and they're having higher coronary arterial disease and heart attacks. And they're saying, I guess we're just the paradox. We're really trying to follow the, the instructions. You know, it couldn't, be, it couldn't be the instructions, so they called themselves the paradox. But yes, it was the instructions. It was the studies. They were fraudulent. An oleic acid to alpha linoleic acid ratio from clinical trials to inflammatory markers of heart disease. 
more of the same. Changes in consumption over time. Questionable benefits of exchanging saturated fats with polyunsaturated fats. So on and on it goes. Now I'm going to bring it down to here. Here's what I would suggest you do. Actually, we'll start here. So we're looking at the omega-3-6 fatty acid tests. And this is what I would recommend you to get. It's $35 here. It might be more expensive for you. Um, but this is what you should get. You should get it once a year, twice a year would be better. Four times a year would be good too. Until you really got it down and knew what was driving your high omega-6, right? Find out. Goal number one is find out what is driving your high omega-6. It's the food you're eating. What about the foods you're eating, right? How are you going to define that? So first you get the results. Now you find out your results. You go, okay, now I have to change it. Maybe you don't. I haven't met anybody who doesn't, by the way. Okay, so now you have your results. What are you going to do? You're going to go on to Chronometer, which is a free app or something like it, but I just know about chrono Chronometer. And we're going to, uh, you're going to log in for a week, everything you eat. Yes, it's a little tedious and you have to figure out what to do, but it works out. There's even a YouTube on how to use Chronometer. So it's free do this, here's why you're gonna do this, is because it's gonna be able to tell you of everything you eat, processed food or not, as a big database, of how much omega-6 and how much omega-3 you're having. So it's going to point out to you, and you can go down and you're gonna be able to find out, identify what foods you're having that are this big source of omega-6. You need to address that. Yes, you can take fish oil, EPA, DHA, and a good brand, and so on and so forth, and I know all about that. But do this part first. Assess, identify first. Then you can take some, you might not even need it, you can take some to get the ball rolling, some fish oil, but basically the more you take care of that, the less you have to take care of this. And unless you plan to take fish oil for the rest of your life, why not get to the source of the issue, which is identifying the source of the omega-6, how much, and then just get tested again. Do it next quarter, the quarter after that, six months after that, a year after that, and you're done with that whole process. Now you know about you. You've intervened on your behalf and made a huge change. You've pivoted away from all that list of disorders, diseases, conditions associated with a high omega-6, those pro-inflammatory conditions. Okay? Hope that was worth it. Hoping good things for you. Bye-bye.